Okay, get in there, Matt. Get in there with him. I used to, I used to have the niggas. I used you to don't want to be with your with the pyro, huh? I, I used to have his, his brother <laughs> beat him up. He ain't gonna tell you that part. Nigga, who used to beat me up? Your brother. Which one? Turtle. You oh. know, Matt they ain't gonna do that. Okay, stand right there. Let me get a selfie cam. Let's see. Oh yeah, we all in there. I was the founder. I created Conan Parker in my mother's garage. I had a lot of, you know, lifting weights and I was on sport. They started calling me Big Miz. Original stutter box, east side fire, who's pebble, little bitch up, Miz City Gangster Bloods. This is the beginning. My name is Slick, Camp Nella Park. That's where we at right here, Camp Nella Park. First of all, where your family come from? Shit. Africa. <laughs> No, no, my my parents, my parents come from East LA, so I guess when I moved to uh, Compton when I was three, my uncle got killed in East LA City Terrace. So after that, we moved right here on Rosecrans, right behind behind McKinley. So after that, we coming up. Shit, we used to come to the park with my dad, get free lunch, and play t-ball, basketball, and football. But that's how I came to Compton, but I'm the only black guy in my family right now. What you mean by you the only black guy? Are, are, are you Latino? No. Actually, I mean, that's what, we, you know, my grandmother's Indian, my other grandmother's Spaniard, but okay. I don't know how that come about, but... I consider myself African American. I'm, you know so, what I'm saying? So you've been in the penitentiary? Nah. No. County jail. County, County jail. jail. County jail. Never made it to the pen. You can't tell on yourself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't make it that far. When you got to the county, you rolled black. I rolled black. I had to because shit. I couldn't come back to the neighborhood and, you know what I'm saying, one of them, one of them south side and say, oh, he ran with us. No. I had to go. I had to roll with the punches. You got, uh, you got brothers, right? I got brothers. They game bang? Yup. Yup. One of them, one of my brothers looked just like me. He had a bald head though. He was from B-13. He rest in peace now. Linwood Sheriff's killed him in uh, 05. On Cook and El Segundo. They he shot him up. Then my other brother, he moved back to my dad's house in East LA. He from the East LA gang right now. He doing life right now. That's my baby brother. He doing life right now. Then my older brother, I don't know where he at. He tripping in the head right now. So how's that dinner table look, man? You got pie room right here, B13 right here, and your other brother was from where? He was a south side too. South side. How did that dinner table, what was, what did y'all discuss? It wasn't no that, cause you know, it was only always me and my brother, me and my brother Turtle. We used to sneak out the house, go right on walls, I write CPP, he write B13, and go back to the house after that. And you know, I used to be over there all the time. His homies, used to, his homies always used to try to court me on. I'm like, man, I'm a pyro. You know, I can't do it. His older homies was like, Turtle, what's up with your brother? But my my brother was a shooter, so he wasn't he wasn't going for it. He said that's what he is. That's what he's gonna be. You know? So there was some acceptance there. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I played sports right here. And, you know, all my friends was here. I grew up with. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm I played t-ball on up, flag football, basketball, and I didn't know nothing else. 
What year did you walk into Campanella Park? I was born in 77. So I moved here when I was like three or four. So I went to McKinley. Got to McKinley, you start getting older, T-ball. It was, a, it was a park full of gang members at the park. You know, my dad was was at the park with him, you know what I'm saying, hanging out. When he used to take us up here to play, so I just... What was the attraction? The attraction? Yeah. I don't know, it wasn't no attraction. It was, I grew up right here. So you just, mentally you were settled in your mind that this is where you was gonna be and this is what you were gonna I couldn't, I couldn't. The friends I grew up with, we were, we was wannabes back in the day. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't full fledged Capanella. So we was, for you to admit that. We was wannabes. You know what I'm saying? Because we was coming up as youngsters. We was wannabes. We would say Capanella at McKinley, Vanguard, but we was wannabes. You know what I'm saying? Until we got into them streets. Until we start putting in work. You know what I'm saying? Until we start walking to other hoods, writing on walls. You know what I'm saying? And then the big homies, you know, I didn't have to get put on. You know, like the rest of these cats come to the hood you know i was i was chosen by this neighborhood right here you know what i'm saying i didn't ask to be i want to be so it was a mutual yeah. embracement yeah you know they embraced me you know all all of them embraced me you know and then i ran with it you know and i remember one time i was on the nine um i was at miss thomas house. 149 149 i was at miss thomas house and it was uh meat man uh, all them in there right and the thing was i supposed to spend the night but miss thomas came in there i was like y'all better get that mexican kid up out of there you know what i'm saying so me man was like mom he uh he 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 ain't man he black get that mexican out of here you know miss thomas used to say that so until i grew up and grew up in the neighborhood and then they start sending me around they accepting me you know everybody you know mm -hmm. so shit. how did that make you feel I, mean, I didn't want to go home. It was like 11 o'clock. You was with your homies. I was with the homies, and they they, they pushed, but Miss Thomas kept going up in there, get him out of here, I'm going to get him out of here. So so when you say homies, can you give me some names? Yeah, Is mean, that allowed? I mean, we ain't nothing to hide over here. We ain't did shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, over there, my, my grown-up was Meat Man, rest in peace. It was uh, Frey Bowl, Lil Al, Cuckoo, uh... This nigga was always in jail right here. Who's uh, that? He said when you started, huh? Oh, when I started? You know, with them, you know, playing baseball. You know, Mossberg used to play with us, Jama, Tootie. We used to be right here in the park. Like I said, we used to be wannabe. We used to hang, we used to come to the park, get free lunch, go swim and go to the county house on the Prilla. And we used to see the older homies right here in the park. You know what I'm saying? It used to be so many hoods up in here, and I guess I just gravitated to them. You know what I'm saying? How they hung. You know what I'm saying? Low riders, you know what I'm saying? This and that. The park used to be always full of them. We used to walk to the walk to the park, so it was nothing. So when they start seeing our face, like who is this? Who is this little messing kid? And they used to be like, that's Bobby Sons right there. So that's So Bobby there was Sons. something about the life that you liked that immediately you just took a liking to it? Nah, it wasn't no life taking no liking to it. I grew up in it. And, and you know, when you grow up in something, you become from it. You know, I didn't it was just I was here every every summer, every day practice. You, know? you mentioned Mossberg. Yeah. Can we talk about Mossberg? Can we talk about Mossberg. That was that was the homie. He was a couple of years younger than me. Uh huh. We played right here on this diamond right here. For the Dodgers. We sometimes we be on we used to be on opposite teams. He used to be a pitcher, I used to be a pitcher. You know what I'm saying? We used to we, we Coach Ronnie used to um to um we used to be our coach right here. Uh -huh. uh, we had a, we, it was mixed. Maskins one five five used to come over here and play with us. They wasn't one five five then, but you know when they got older, they started be, be coming from the games. What kind of guy was Mossberg before the music? Mossberg was skinny when he was coming up. He was real skinny, you know. Like I said, he was skinny. He was always in the sports. He he played baseball. He was a good pitcher. He played baseball. You know what I'm saying? That's what he he was in. And then um, he moved to Lancaster. He moved to Lancaster, then he came, he came big. He was big Mossberg. He was big. Yeah. He wasn't Mossberg, then he was, he was, he was, he was, uh, he was J-Bone. He was J-Bone at first. And then he has, he had, he had quite a few names. J-Bone, Big Stud. And then when he got into the rapid thing, 
That's when he changed the name. And to that's Mossberg. when everything took off. For that's him, when right? everything took took off. You know what I'm saying? So who who introduced him to the music, or he, it was just something he done? I don't know. Like I said, when he came back from Lancaster, he was into the he was in, into the music thing. Uh -huh. When he came big, he was like 300 pounds. He was big. Nigga, what the fuck you eat over there? You know. So he used to he used to be over there hitting the gate on us. Slick, let me go back to the one five fives. So y'all grew up with them before the game bang? Yeah. We went to McKinley with them. Went to McKinley with them. They stayed in the trailer courts over there on uh on County Boulevard. How far is that from here? It's walking distance. Well, I used to walk up, I used to go over there to the uh trailer, you know what I'm saying? Eat dinner at with them with uh Minor they, his name is Minor and Turtle now, rest in peace. You know so, what I'm saying? So you guys know each other by first name, last name. First time. name. You know what I'm saying? First name, last name. We went to McKinley, played sports right here until like we until we got to that junior high high school that's when it was like gang banging now there was one five five but I, I see them in the street still and they gave me the respect i get in respect you know what i'm saying we grew up together you can't break that bond you know what i'm saying you so, can't break that bond so so when the wars jumped off with the compton vario and the pyros did y'all two ever get into it oh we get into it all the time okay. with them but we're like when i see but, when i see the cats i grew up with it's like you know shake hand hug was handing, he might have his homies with him. He'd be like, that's the homie slipping Captain Nell. And they look like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the, I grew up with him. He talked to him in Spanish. I don't know none of that lingo shit, so I don't know what he's saying. He probably was like, yeah, we gonna get this motherfucker after this. But no, I don't know, I don't speak that shit. I'd be like, hold up, man, talk English shit. <laughs> so, 155, how far do you feel they're away from uh, Captain Nell Park? Like, what right is here, they stay in the hood. They stay in the hood. Yeah, we got a, we got a trailer park right here behind the park. They over there. They just took over that. Give me so. the boundaries of Capanella Park. We from Avalon. The hood ain't got bigger now from the, okay. from the little homies. The hood ain't expanding from the little homies. But our boundary is from Avalon and Rosecrans to Compton Boulevard and Avalon, Avalon to Central to Central and Rosecrans. But okay. the hood ain't got bigger since the little homies with the uh. It's always been that. Yeah. But now it ain't got real big with the NWA. You know what I'm saying? They call themselves Nella West Anthers now. So this is this a bigger gang now. So I got a question. Was 150 before Capanella Park or was that simultaneous? Capanella Park. It was all Capanella, but 150, actually 150, the 50. A lot of crits functions on, on the 50. Who came first? Was it the 150 or Campanella Park, or was it simultaneously something done together? Campanella's always been here. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, in my in my era, the 50 actually um, back in the days we had a hitter, a, a big hitter, Big D. Uh, he was on the 50. He kind of, to me, if you ask me, he made the 50 because he was a uh, he was one of the guys who had the money, and uh, he was balling like the 70s and 80s so uh he he brought a lot of people see he kind of like uh i remember back in the days cheese mike uh he used to be over there he used to come through he used to be over there in the uh on the 5-0 uh pretty much the 5-0 uh vic from the uh from the zone uh, a lot of a lot of older dudes who was who was who had a little bread was going to fuck with big d over there on the uh on the O. And that's the same street Larry Avon is on. La right? Yeah, yeah, Larry Avon. What about Hobart Bryce? Hobart Hobart stayed on my, across the street from my mom. This uh -huh. this they still they family still there. Okay. Yeah, that's Karen Street. Okay. What about did you know Danny Dodd? I know the name. I can't put the face up there. I damn, on, heard that. Was it while. King? Damn, King I know or Corlett, that name. one of those streets? Taboo. Who was Danny? I didn't know that name. I know that name. I know that name, but I, I can't put a face. That's an old. Uh huh. Yeah, that's an old, old. That's 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 from early eighties. He's down the street from John Earl. Yes, yeah, the king. Yeah, I can't really picture the name, but yeah, I remember back. I remember them days, and I remember that name. I can't put no face to it. So, um, Captain Ellen Park, right? When did it start? Can you, can you give us a date on that? Shit, in the early seventies, uh -huh. the mid seventies. Let's say the mid, the mid seventies, the early seventies to the mid. The, oh, let's say the, the mid seventies. Uh huh. Okay. 
Okay. Well, can you introduce yourself? My name is Kenyon Payne. They call me Big Kenzo. Uh huh. And uh, I'm from Campanella Park. You know, I grew up right here across the street from the park. From the park is in the apartments. Terrace Town Hustlers. The, the original Terrace Town <laughs> Hustlers. You know what I'm saying? And you actually worked in the dairy, right? Well, when I was a kid, they used to let me come up there. And, and, and hand out the bags because it was a dairy that you could drive through. Uh -huh. Order your stuff. Uh, I went absolutely. from going up there, my mama sent me up there with a note, milk bread, <laughs> and a dollar. And That's what the mamas did. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We'd go up there, get some milk and some bread, something else for a dollar. And I'd take it up there and they give me the stuff and I walk home. So the dude say, hey man, come back up. He really was trying to get at mama. So he, uh, he had me come up there and I'm just here, bag the stuff up and I take it and put it in the people's car. Bringing the money to you know to to the uh, cash register, all that go get the people they change. That was that was kind of cool back in the days. So when you first laid eyes on Slick, what was your take? Really, I, uh, my first take was I mean we when he came up to Slick five six years under me. Uh huh. So I was I was dunking him in the swimming pool before anything. You know what I'm saying? He come in the swimming pool. And I'm, I'm, I'm just he manning, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, was, but he, I mean, him, his brothers, his family, they was all. It, the whole area was integrated. Uh -huh. It like it wasn't like uh, back in the days we didn't. Somebody come in the area, you check. We didn't them. make a difference. No, nah, you don't. You don't. We didn't check them because when they came, he really came through his through his pops. You know what I'm saying? His pops was messing with the with the super OGs. So he was already in, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, it wasn't no like, who is you? Because of, we already know who his family is. Can we get a roll call of the Super OGs? Oh, that would be the foundation, God. would it? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. I would be disrespectful because, you know, my memory age is so bad. Right, but I can right. Give you, I can give you some. Well, just give us a couple. I can give you some. I remember, uh, I got to start off with, with uh, King Rooster, Lin Wu. And you know what I'm saying? I got it. That you know, that's, Rest in that's, peace. Remember him. that's my super OG. But we got Giacomo, we got VJ, we got uh shit, we got Val Harvey. Bobo. You know, we 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 uh, Jake G. Jake. Oh Jake Big G is old yeah, Jake we see me and Jake is the same man. Big Jake. Yeah, he's old he's a G though. Yeah. He's a super yeah. G, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm I'm talking about dudes that that's that's Six, seven, no, six, seventeen years older than Jay. LB. L, oh yeah. See, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the dudes who was, uh, like Tas Taboo brother. Ronald you know Bacon. What I'm I remember Lanier the baby Bacon. boys. I'd have seen this nigga come over the gate after he didn't rob something. I don't know what the hell he robbed. He climbing down the telephone pole because he jumped off a building and landed on the telephone pole. We in the back of the apartments playing. I'm like looking, and this nigga climbing down a damn telephone pole, and next thing you know. We like, man, what you doing? He like, man, shut up. You didn't see me. He get on. The police come like five, ten minutes later. Asks us, did we see him? No, we didn't see nobody. Next thing you know, he, this shit was, uh, the liquor store got hit. Mo. So we thought, we like, what the hell? This nigga didn't hit the store and got away. Yeah. Sound like you guys had a lot of fun growing up here. Oh, man, it was, it was, it was. Oh, see, all fun. of this area right here was a field. Swing that in. field. That field had turtles, frogs, but see, it, it didn't have a gate. You could just walk in it, and it's another field behind it that leads to Avalon to, you know, it was a big field, man. It was abandoned cars, so we can do something, and the police be chasing us and go to the field. They ain't coming in. You know what I'm saying? They had ponds and all of that kind I of stuff. I confirm what you're saying, man, yeah. because I grew up in this area, right? Yeah. And the swamps. Was really the swamp. Oh yeah, the swamp. Tadpoles. Yeah. They had it right fish. there. That was yeah. that was our right swamp here. right there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was our swamp right there. Right, 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 right. So I'm saying this whole area. Oh yeah. Was like that. Yeah. yeah. All of this area back here was a cow farm back here. Uh -huh. This picture's inside the park in the in the recreation room that shows well, that. Some area. different apartments here. They just no, built. No, the old apartments are there. Okay. In there. But those they just stuck in there. In the last two years, those been you know getting put up. Yeah. Because I remember when those apartments got right there, 
a lot that's of 72. stuff changed. That's 72. That's a when lot, I moved it over there. Yeah, a lot of stuff changed. We couldn't, yeah. we couldn't get in that motherfucking apartment unless you knew a code for the apartments yeah, up yeah, in there. And I wasn't getting right you the code, fool. <laughs> I, I used to walk over there and press any motherfucking number to get up in there. You used to press 100. Remember, that was the code. <laughs> oh, no so what, what you press. saying? Slick was a troublemaker? No, nah, no. Nah, that, was, that was my boy. <laughs> that was my boy. I wasn't. But, I wasn't. The, but the people, but us inside, uh -huh. the, the inside of the apartment boys, we wasn't giving out the code because we we didn't want nobody in unless we wanted. One day you might be cool, one day you might not be cool. Right. So we ain't gonna put the code out there. Right. That was just something. We, but we, we used to be stuck at the gate. Us, if we see if they see us, that's all. Hey, we used to be stuck at the gate. And then next thing you know, we gonna come let them in right away. You know what I'm saying? Or else, right. hop the gate. The gate six feet. Hop the gate. They right there. They still want you to hop yeah. the gate. Hop the gate. Fuck that. Open the buzzers in. Yeah. So glad you missing Giacomo, man. That's our boy right yeah, there. Yeah, Giacomo, man. super OG. I never you know? met Giacomo. I don't know if I did or not. But Giacomo you know? from the block. Yeah, yeah, but I've been I've been walking these streets when I was young, man. Like I wasn't the only Hispanic here. I had two more friends of mine that was claiming the hood at McKinley and Vanguard. But when they went to Centennial, Southsiders got at them. Things change. Got at them. You gonna be this? Then we got two. We got you know? two super two two super white boys from the hood. Really? Choo Choo and Crib. Yeah, Choo Choo and Crib. Back in the hey, days, they used, to, out. they used to call themselves the Lords back in the day. Hey, what block was they on? They, they, came, on the they, nine? they were from the nine. Well, Choo Choo always claimed the eight, but he was from the nine because, see, the eight was before the nine. Uh -huh. They the, both the played the nine. The, no, Chris claimed the eight. They, he, he play, still they claimed the eight. eight. Okay, well, well they, uh, they lived in apartments with me. Mm -hmm. and uh, But tell them, it was only one street, 148. Was, at that time, it was only the eight. It was only the eight, you know. In the in the in the uh, the nine didn't come until until till the uh, the probably the, the the late. No, let's probably say the late the late the late eighties. That's when we start claiming the nine. Me, B, Nick, D, Mac, Ice, T, Rue. Uh, just a couple more. I hope I ain't forgetting. But <laughs> you forgot yeah. a couple of more. Red, <laughs> red, more. Yeah, and we others. we we uh. We started, we, we, we pretty much, we started the nine. And our address, see the see departments don't ain't on the nine, but our address start with 149. That's how we came to saying 149, because okay. it was 148. And you know, as us, we was we was all all a one unit, even though we at one time we were saying Terrace Town, we was all one unit. When we would go up to Centennial, the hood get into it with another hood, Pyrus, Bloods, from Crips or whatever. We was always going to be, had a back. So we was all that. But, you know, in the summers, you know, it's always something. We up here fighting each other and all of that kind of stuff. Certain people fighting each other. It'll, it'll I start a little thing. I remember a day. Summertime, who will be popping? Oh, man. That was, you, you get your fill on over there. You get your fill on up in yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? In the pool, man. And she, and the, slick. That's why they call you Slick. I used to be a lifeguard there. He even made it to be a lifeguard. I mean, That's a lifeguard I mean, I'm talking about that motherfucker. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? I done knocked so many lifeguards up in that motherfucker right there. See, that lifeguard up in there. So, you know, the home, the homegirl Tiff, she got me, me and the homeboy T Bone on that job. Man, we went to Jesse Owens, man. I still had my tattoos. I had my tattoos when I was like 13, 14 on my back arm. And we went to Jesse Owens to take the lifeguard test. I'm like, I look at T-Bone, I'm like, nah, I know. I'm nah, like, I, know. I look, that's when they had the uh, stair upstairs at Jesse on, the old Jesse on. We go up and then I take my shirt off, man. Them motherfuckers was upstairs, man. They let me do the test and they did, they, they was like, man, you got to put your shirt on, man. I'm like, we out of here anyway. <laughs> Let's roll. We passed the test. They let me take, they let me take the test. But I used to be, I used to be on 89th to Western, man. I used to be everywhere because I used to, I came up. Hustling. I used to sell t-shirts. I used to be a bootlegger. I used to pump gas right on, on Avalon and Rosecrans. You a man of many talents. And me and my brother was shooting nickels and dimes in the back. And then his brother came up in the back and was like, y'all want to make some real money? We were like six or seven. Like, doing what? She's like, where, mom, where your mom at? We took her to mom. First concert I did was ZZ Top at the farm. Manchester Freeway. He put us on the Manchester Freeway. I made like 40 bucks. I was strong after that. No more pumping gas for me no more. <laughs> and then, after he taught me the game, you know, B started taking y'all all over the damn He started world taught me that taught, shit. taught me the game. Then I think LB went to jail. Then I hooked up with Vince, Vincent Milhouse. He had a shop on 89th and Western, right there. I used to catch the bus. I used to catch the bus there. He took me from LA to New York. 
I was in New York in 91, was no gang banging. I was in New York with the Red Chuck, Gray Ben Davis, Red Ben, um, ben so Davis. So was puzzled. It was puzzled. I was there. I was in the Bronx. I did Yankee Stadium. You know what I'm saying? I did U2 and um, Public Enemy. Yankee Stadium, man. I did the Puerto Rican parade. So slick, you might be responsible for some of that's going on in New York. No, no, because they told me they don't want, they don't want. That's when DJ Queen and Tim Dog was getting that, uh, get, uh, going into it. And I tried to holler at a bitch there, and she, my accent. She was like, "Where you from? I'm from Compton." That bitch, she, she turned the whole 360 and got up out of there. But I had New York cats out there. You know what I'm saying? That I sold T-shirts with, and I was hanging around the Puerto Rican cats. I stood in New York for a month. I stayed at the Jersey Turnpike at the at the York Motel. I, I'd have been at Hunters Point, all that, man. So, the people in New York, they wasn't at least curious about what you were doing and what you represented. Nah, cause when I when I stepped on the when we see the the Bronx is right there, Yankee Stadium right there in the neighborhood, and I stepped out like I was in L.A. Compton, and they was like, "Hey, yo." We don't want that blood and cuz out here. I'm like, man, I ain't trying. I'm trying to make some money. I'm a hustler. But how my attire was, I was Ben Davis down. You was true to the game. Yeah, I was Red Chucks, Red Ben Davis shirt. You know what I'm saying? I was out there, but I was getting money. You know, and they, they told me, we don't want this. And then the next time I went to New York, it was bloods out there. I'm like, damn. So what they didn't want it, they accepted it. They accepted it, you know. And um, it's not long. When, when did you go back? Do you remember what I year? went to, I went back in ninety four. So three years later. That's when that's just, when oh, I went I went back there. That's when Obama had the inauguration. We was, I flew into DC, but we flew to we drove to New York. I spent three days in uh, New York. You know, I, I met a couple of homies out there. You made two thousand four? No, he mean the, his yeah. original was nine. Then he, after that his last oh, time back oh. then. Last time back, okay. I went out there. That's when Obama was getting um, inaugurated. Inaugurated. Right. I was in DC selling shirts. But before that, we flew into um, Washington early and we drew up to New York. And I wanted to see, cause we had New York capitalists out there. We got homies out got there. A gang you know? of them out there. We got right a homie. Right. So I met a homie out there on 148th in Amsterdam. I was standing at one of my um, partners that sell t shirts. His, his people was in New York. We stayed in there. Their apartments is weird as a motherfucker, but they big up in that motherfucker. And, but like I said, when I went in there, and I was in there in the 90s, I was hanging around these two Puerto Rican cats and they, took me to their house and they didn't want me to leave. Slick, I think you had more influence on them than you realize. No, I don't think so. Cause when I, cause when I, when I, when I came back home, I was in Atlantic City. That's when the Rockets beat the Knicks in that baseball game. I mean, basketball game. That's when we drew back. So that's when I, I was in New York for a month. I stayed in there for a month. I was from New York, Philly, Chicago, Detroit. I was in Cleveland. When uh, San Antonio swept uh, Cleveland, I was there. <laughs> Milwaukee. Nigga, we put up in Milwaukee, man. We put up at a Taco Bell. Get something to eat. Late night, we just put up in Milwaukee. What year was that, Slade? That was, uh, when the motherfucking uh, Cleveland was in the playoffs with San Antonio. That was 93, wasn't it? 93, because they beat Detroit. I was in Detroit. They beat Detroit. And they 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 uh was playing San Antonio. I don't know. It was, it was somewhere in that year. But when we we put up in Milwaukee. I was there selling shirts from Milwaukee Bucks too. And we put up in Milwaukee. We put up in the Taco Bell drive through. And these niggas, I never did drugs. These niggas smoking weed. And the motherfucker asked to hit it. Hit it. He in the drive through. They let him hit it. These were like, "What you want? Where can we buy some weed at?" He was saying sticks. What the fuck is sticks? Yeah, they call them. What the fuck is sticks? They was like. What y'all smoking? So he took us to 15th and Center. It was like a bookie joint after hours. Oh my God. Oh I'm my God, nigga. We pulled up in there, knocked on the door. Them motherfuckers like, who are y'all? Oh, we from Cali. They didn't believe. We put a Cali ID, nigga. They showed it. They rolled out the red. There were prostitutes up in that motherfucker. We took the whole motherfucker after hours with us back to the room. It was like, nigga, we, we stood in that motherfucker. They rolled red. Cali, we from Cali. Everything was free. Everything so, was on them. My statement is correct. You had more influence on them than you realize. Man, the most ghettoest hood I went to was Detroit and Chicago. I remember one of my one of my partners, he was smoking dope. He got caught in the projects right there. That's when uh other nigga said he sold his Jordans. He sold his Jordans. What? So being me, I'm from Compton, man, we finna go get this nigga out this motherfucking crack out. So I push up and it was like, man, hold up, youngster, you fuck around and get a pumpkin head. What the fuck is a pumpkin head? <laughs> I'm from Con, we finna get him up. He oh, you these motherfuckers. And he explained to me what a pumpkin head is. 
Oh, nigga, shoot you in the head and watch your head swole up. Hmm. I'm like, oh, shit. So, yeah, I've been everywhere in the United States, man. Then when I came home, I started selling Christmas trees. 